This is Jeff Mucci, RCR Wireless News. We're in Palo Alto today meeting with Eric Hokinson, who is the LTE expert for ANRITSU. I think your proper title is Senior Product Manager for Measurement and Test Equipment, is that right? Right, for Microwave Measurements Division, exactly. Um, you recently launched, uh, I think you've announced you were the first one to market with a, with a turnkey LTE measurement and test device. Can you tell me a little bit more about the product and uh, what it does? Right. This, this is our uh, BTS Master here, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of a line of products for um, making measurements on all kinds of uh, wireless base stations. Mm -hmm. Um, the recent announcement is specifically around LTE. Okay. Um, we've actually uh, had an LTE solution for installation and maintenance for some months now, and the latest announcement is that we've expanded that to cover all of the bandwidths available around the world. LTE is a very flexible standard uh, that can adapt to different uh, spectrum when a carrier has a wide spectrum or a narrow spectrum. Uh, and we've just upgraded the capability to uh, do all of those. Uh, our first initial announcements were focused on some of the very first operators that had one specific spectrum uh, allocation. Would you mind taking a few minutes and showing us exactly what this box does? And, and while you're going through the demonstration, help us really understand the underlying benefit to the carrier. Okay, good. So I'll, I'll just turn the instrument here for a moment just to show the, the connector panel on the top because that's a little bit difficult to see from the angle we had before. There's a, as you can see, there's a whole number of connectors there, and it's really for different measurements. Uh, we're really focused today on the LTE measurements, where you'd hook up a base station to the RF input uh, from a test port from the base station, and you'd look at the modulation quality, and that's what the picture we're showing right now is. Okay. Um, basically says if the base station is putting out a good signal or a bad signal. Uh, and um, as components age and there's stress on the base station, sometimes the quality will degrade, uh, and that will cause problems in the network. It will cause what we call blocks and drops, mm -hmm. especially at the uh, edge of a cell site where the signal quality is not quite as good because of the loss and the multipath in the system. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, operator can use this instrument for verifying the base station is working right and for troubleshooting when there are problems. Uh, operators will usually see statistics of how good their network is, how many times the call is blocked, somebody tries to dial and it doesn't work, or it's uh, dropped, they're in the middle of a call and it just goes away. We've all experienced that. So when they see there's a problem, they don't necessarily know what component to fix in the base station. So what we can do is, is make measurements around the base station to reduce the uncertainty of what, what the problem is so they can uh, replace the failed component rather than taking out a component that might be perfectly good and sending it back to the manufacturer and then getting into this problem of oh, is it really broken or not or why are you sending this to me? You're wasting the time and effort of our technicians. Why don't you send us stuff that's really broken? Which spectrum were they using initially and, and what spectrums are they using in other markets right so the the most recent one is the 20 megahertz uh, which is uh, going to be commonly available in Europe in the 2.6 gigahertz band uh, also in um, Japan they're looking at 15 and 20 megahertz in their 1.5 gigahertz band for use in LTE and those are starting to roll out later this year and into next year the very first uh, announcements uh, were here in the US of 10 megahertz spectrum and that was in the, the recently available 700 megahertz band that was right. uh, part of the digital turnoff we had a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So who's buying the product today? And it's really uh, all of the wireless carriers around the world for doing um, maintenance of their base stations. That could be Verizon, AT&T, Vodafone, um, China Mobile in China, um, really all of the big carriers and lots of the little ones too. So who's starting to buy the, the BTS Master is focused on LTE. Where are you starting to see the early traffic? Well, you look at who's doing LTE rollouts. We're basically there uh, everywhere. So the, the biggest um, network that's going to be up first is uh, Verizon here in the U.S. Um, and then, of course, the first operating network was Telea Sonera in Sweden, but that's just a small area in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. So um, we're talking with both of those companies. Mm -hmm. And Ritsu is an old company. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of the company and also how the company's Structured. So, so the company is actually over 100 years old, founded in Japan, and has gone through several different uh, changes during its life. Probably the biggest one was uh, almost exactly 20 years ago 
when it merged with a company called Wiltron here in the Bay Area. And I'm actually uh, part of that division now called the Microwave Measurements Division. Uh, in fact, we're having our 20-year uh, uh, anniversary of that merger uh, just this week. You mentioned uh, you're part of the installation and maintenance group. Right. What are the other um, uh, divisions or, or products that, that Enritsu offers in the LT product line? I really have a, a soup to nuts test offering there. Everything from R&D products through uh, user equipment or cell phone conformance to installation and maintenance down through service assurance, which is software that looks at the operation of the network. Uh, it's really a big initiative for the whole company, and we've done, I think, an excellent job of providing this really wide range of products. Um, what can you tell us about the size of Enritsu in terms of revenue? and number of employees and, and scope of operations around the world? So we're a global company. Mm-hmm. Uh, headquarters is in Japan. We have a very large division here, our microwave measurements division in uh, Morgan Hill, California. Mm-hmm. Um, and we sell um, pretty much everywhere. Uh, everywhere there's a cell phone operator, we have um, some method of making sure they get the test products for maintaining their systems. And the, um, I believe the publicly announced numbers is about $782 million in revenue. We have uh, roughly 4,000 employees spread around the world. Um, a lot of those in Japan. There's a big manufacturing division there. Um, here in Morgan Hill, we have a, another big manufacturing division. Uh, so there you have um, R&D, uh, manufacturing, engineering, manufacturing technicians, um, and marketing engineers. Uh, as well as management and all of the other overhead. And then we have sales spread around through 90 countries throughout the world. Who, who buys your product? It's really, uh, well, there's two sets. The biggest one we're talking about here is the telecom operators. People actually run networks. Mm-hmm. And then we have a whole other set of what we call general purpose. That can be some police department making sure their radio is working to people that make amplifiers or components or just about anything else in the wireless space. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, I take it as a product manager, you work in different regions around the world as well. Exactly, yes. Can you compare and contrast how networks are built in the U.S. versus how networks are built and deployed in other parts of the world? That's an interesting question. And in, in some ways, the technologies are all similar and the forcing functions are all similar, that you have customers and you have a technology and you have a way to do that. Mm-hmm. But certain regions of the world, of course, are much fo- more focused on cost because of the the customers they have just can't pay for more services. So you go to places like India or China, they tend to be very focused on cost, um, to the exclusion of maybe doing um, some more of the tests that might benefit them. Uh, Here in the U.S., it's kind of the opposite end of the scale. We have companies that can be very focused on doing uh, proactive work on all aspects of the network and provide higher level services, um, more of the data explosion that we're seeing. Uh, which is one of the big reasons for LTE, I think, is that uh, as we're seeing people using more and more data on their cell phones, it tends to start overloading networks. Mm-hmm. I think many people have seen the problems that AT&T have had with the iPhone in certain cities. Mm-hmm. Um, and being able to have modern systems and more spectrum and test equipment for monitoring and maintenance are all things that are necessary for being able to grow with that data need. Mm-hmm. So how does Enritsu help someone like AT&T who has acute pressure on the quality of their network. Can you give me some examples of maybe not AT&T specifically, mm-hmm. but where you're, you're helping uh, carriers manage their network more effectively as a product? Right. So there's two aspects to that. One is, in some cases, you just need more capacity. So you need to put up more base stations. You need to install them and make sure they're working right. And then the other half is making sure that what you've got installed is working correctly. So that can be as simple as making sure the base station has the right output power and the modulation quality is good. Or you could actually make measurements out in the field um, to see that the, the uh, transmitted signal is correct. Or if there's interference, maybe somebody has a, uh, a repeater that they've installed that isn't working properly. This is a very common problem where repeaters start oscillating. Some of the output gets fed back into the input and it generates bad signals, which interferes with everybody. Well, somebody needs to go find that, and having a a tool like this with a directional antenna is a very powerful method for searching out where those are and and gives the the engineer figuring out the problem a way to show the person that their their repeater isn't working right, and then they can fix the problem. Eric, um, what should we know about Enritsu that we haven't already talked about today? 
Oh, we covered so much stuff. Um, we make great products. We, uh, I think we're number one in the installation and maintenance field. Uh, we're well loved by our customers and we're constantly doing things to improve for them. I think the LTE uh, capability is a good example of that. Um, other than that, I think we've done a, a good job of covering the company. Great, thank you. Now, one other question. Uh, do OEMs also buy your equipment? Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, so when I was talking about the range of products, uh, the R&D and manufacturing aspects, those are really the OEMs, the people that make cell phones and base stations. They buy our products as well. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they'll even buy the handheld products because they want to make sure that when it gets installed and this product is used for testing it, that it actually is going to pass, uh, even though we have products specifically focused on those areas as well. Mm -hmm. And, and Ritsu does other things. Uh, the wireline and wireless. Can you maybe touch on some of the other things on Richie does? So um, one of the other big ones is components. Mm -hmm. That will actually, we're an OEM ourselves in some senses, that we uh, will sell accessories for test equipment as well as um, things that are similar to that. Connectors, for example, is one thing we're very famous at mm -hmm. for a high frequency operation. Um, Eric, thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Jeff. Right. Cheers.